I would bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, again we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Every Bibles, I want us to turn to the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and the start reading with the 17th verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Paul said, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his precious word. That last verse, I think if we could get a hold of it, it would change our lives. Now, the unseen things are the most important things in your life. I want you to get all that. Not the things you can see. There isn't anything you can see. But the thing that you can't see is the most important thing in your life. And Dr. Tozer preached and said, death and decay is written over everything that man is and does. I don't care what accomplishment, it's going to it will come to decay. On TV, I was noticing the other night, listening, watching some of the program on the fall or the ruins of past civilizations. And every kingdom that has ever existence has risen and fallen. Those who are going to school studying history will find, they'll no doubt study the history of the, Rome, the fall, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. And every nation has followed that. And America is on the same pattern that the fall of the Roman Empire was. But the thing is, the fall and rise of it about history, the thing about the thing we learn from history is that we don't learn anything. When you study, we don't learn a thing from it. We follow down the very same path. Maybe you think of that song that we sing, change and decay and all around I see, O oh, thou who changes not, abide with me. Have you ever thought about Paul in prison? Why he didn't tell about the awful things in that prison? Yeah, and he, those who go on hold and trips go down into one of the prison cells where he was, dark, damp, they say a sewer ran through there, and he never tells us anything about it. Did you ever stop and think about that? You know why? He didn't look at it. We see it. If we'd have written it, We'd have told how awful and stinking, how terrible it was. We would have told all about how terrible it was. He didn't look at it. That's why he could write songs and tell us, uh, Rejoice evermore, and everything gives thanks. And, and in the Philippian jail, why could they sing? He didn't look at it. We get defeated because we look at it. Hope you're with me. He didn't look at the things that he could see. So, uh, the Word of God says here, we look not at the things that are seen. How much does that take up of our life? How, are we, how much are we taking up of what we see? But Paul never looked at it. He looked at the things that are unseen. The things that are seen, he said, are temporal, They'll pass away. Everything you can see will pass away someday, but the thing you can't see is the only thing that's eternal. I think it was Hagen, preacher, a preacher by the name of Hagen, when he prayed, was a great man to pray for the sick, and he said when he prayed for the sick, he said, I never look at what I see, but I look at what I believe. In Romans there, in the fourth chapter, it says, God calleth those things that be not as though they were, and he was not weak in faith and staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. And this was accounted to him for righteousness. He was a righteous man, not because of what he did, 
but what he believed. And we many times want to try to work and do something good and think, well, this will please God, this will please God. The thing will please him if you believe him. Look at Esau, he sold his birthright for a mess of pottage. He lived for the moment. And uh, you say, well, Brother Morgan, the things that we see, are they not important? Yes, of course they're important. And God knows they're important. But he just said, if you seek his kingdom first, he'll take care of what's seen. So he doesn't ignore it. Look at Job, the things that were seen were taken away from him. The cattle, the sheep, the camels, his sons and his daughters. All that he saw, and we look what a tragedy, what an awful thing that Job went through. He lost things he could see. But look at the end when he got a revelation of God. He said, oh God, he said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, he said, I abhor myself. Why? He had been living for what he saw. And God took away what he saw so he could see the unseen. He said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore, I abhor myself and repent in dust and in ashes. Look at Moses. As we look at this dear man, Moses, remember when Israel was in Moses, I mean, M Moses was in, in the desert, they were in the desert, they built a golden calf and worshipped it. And when Moses came down from the mountain, God said to Moses, my presence will not go with thee to Canaan. I'll send an angel. I'll give you everything I promised to give you. I'll give you all of Canaan, all of its wealth. I'll give you homes and vineyards you didn't plant. I, I'll give you all the wonders, the wealth of Canaan. I'll give you, Moses said, I don't want any of it. Moses did not want any of Canaan. Anything in Canaan he could see, he did not want it. Are you with me? He said, unless your presence goes with me, I'd rather stay here in this desert and wander around with nothing in Canaan. I'd rather stay here with your presence than all that Canaan offers. And after he prayed, finally God said, all right, my presence shall go with thee. And he, Moses said, wherefore shall it be known that, that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight, if it is not that thou goest with us. How, how are we going to be any testimony to the heathen in Canaan? If your presence isn't with us, our testimony will mean nothing. We can have houses and lands and vineyards and be wealthy and everything, and the people can respect our wealth and that, but it won't mean, it won't be, mean a thing to us, a testimony about God to those people unless they see his presence. Same thing is true today. People want, people need the presence. Why? If we get the presence of God, we'll have absolutely everything else. That's what we'll have in heaven. That, that will satisfy every longing, every desire of our heart will be met when we see Jesus. I don't care what you're planning, think, oh, if I get to heaven, I can get this. I want to tell you something. If you look in the face of Jesus, every longing will be met. I don't care what it is. So our testimony is they had the Ten Commandments. Israel could have carried the Ten Commandments into Canaan and said to the people, we've got Ten Commandments, here's how to let it. wouldn't mean a thing. That's why many times our testimony doesn't mean a thing. We can tell people how to live, it won't mean a thing unless God's presence is with us. If my thy presence does not go with us, then don't carry me up to Canaan. That's why Paul could say, I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, that I may win Christ. He suffered the loss of things. 
The same thing is true with Abraham and Lot. Lot chose what he could see. And Abraham, it didn't make any difference. That's why he could say to Lot, we sometimes wonder, how could he say to Lot, take your choice? He could have made it. He was the elder. He could have made it. But he said, it doesn't make any difference to me. Lot, choose what you can see. And he said he chose the green grass of the valley. He chose what he could see. Abraham didn't make any difference because he had what was unseen. He was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. That's why faith is so important in this life, because faith deals with the unseen. That's why we must have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God, because faith deals with the unseen. It deals with the future. Faith doesn't deal with what you see. You can't build faith on what you see. You build faith on the Word of God, and that's why it says faith is the substance of things hoped for, something yet in the future, it's out in the future. Faith is the substance of that that you're hoping for. That's why if you have faith, you have it. You don't need to see it. So faith is absolutely important in this realm because it sees the eternal things and will help you to live for the eternal things instead of what you see. You're living for the things you see, you're going to miss it in the end, like Lot finally lost everything. He gained everything for a while, but then lost it all. Lost what he could see. But Abraham kept it all, looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. It didn't make any difference to Abraham whether he was on a hillside, a barren hillside, or whether he was down in the green grass of the valley. That's why he can say to Lot, Lot, choose you, I didn't make any difference to me. Why could a man say that? He had that. He wasn't looking. Abraham wasn't looking at what you could see. Poor Lot was looking at what he could see. But Abraham wasn't. He was looking at God. He had the, he had the unseen. The Bible says, lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and run with patience the race that's set before us. What is that sin that so easily besets us? Well, it could be a lot of things. But I think the sin that really so easily besets us is the sin of unbelief. If you don't believe God, you have lost everything. If we can get a hold of this, we look not at the things that are seen. We don't live by that. And yet, how many of us we tell, we talk about the things, the things that gets us down are the things that are seen. Isn't that the thing that upsets us? If you get upset over something, isn't it something you see? Paul said, we don't look at that. He didn't look at the prison, sown, shipwrecked, left for dead. And then he gets up and says, rejoice evermore. <laughs> Imagine such a man. Why, he wasn't looking at what he could see. He was looking at what he couldn't see. As it said of Moses, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. What a contradiction. No wonder some people laugh at the word of God and say it's full of contradictions. Of course it is. But what contradicts? What blessed contradictions to see something you can't see. And God lets his people be that kind of people. You can see what you can't see. And God wants us to live that way. If the things that are on the things that are seen are temporal. Everything you can see is temporal will someday be lost. Everything you can see. But the things that are not seen are eternal.